Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. Boner is a man of God now. I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Yep. And Jonathan. And I live by that. And uh, today we're discussing This Is Where I Leave You. As always, short and sweet going around. Luke, what did you think of this movie? You know, you, you've mentioned multiple times uh, the efficiency of storytelling. Yes. And I think this movie is the opposite of that. But I like it a lot. Um, okay, we can get into that in a second. Jonathan, what did you think? Uh, super not my thing. Excellent cast, though. Okay. Um, I like so this movie. And, and yeah, the cast is a big part of why this movie yeah. works for me. Um, so we can discuss the efficiency of storytelling thing uh, real quick. I, I agree. So this, this isn't the most efficient movie ever. Um, I don't think it's terrible at it. I love uh, ensemble casts. I like, uh, I, w- I would describe this movie as a messy movie. Like, specifically, it is, it, it's everyone's a mess, right? Yes, but all the characters are messes, I, for sure. And I think it's messy, too, in, in a lot of its storytelling, in a way. But I also really just dig it. Like, I like it. I like how it comes together as a whole movie. I, I think this movie could have been a lot worse and a lot messier. Like, because it does yeah, have to true, jump around true. all these characters, and I think it does a pretty, a pretty fine job at uh, conveying their flaws and, you know, giving them the their time. Because I mean, you know, for the most part, the movie is centered around Judd, but like, the characters feel like more than just their flaws that are introduced. Like yeah. they still they still flesh out the characters and, and make them characters while giving them their flaws and trying to resolve those. Or I guess not. Nobody really resolves their issues in their movie, but <laughs> coming yeah, to grips that's with sort them. Of the point of the movie, yeah. yeah. I guess the mother does. Um, that's, it, like she never really had any flaws with being happy. Her flaws was more of being fake. I guess she becomes less fake at the end. Yeah, like she hadn't told her family. Yeah. And. Uh, All that good stuff. Um, yeah, so this movie was my pick. Um, so I, I, I'll, I'll lead the charge. Um, I mean, we talked about doing an act structure. I don't know where you'd really cut them for yeah, this movie. <laughs> this movie's going to be really hard to like kind of yeah. go along so with I, it. Yeah. I think... Um, it might be easier to go character by character. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'll, I'll start with a brief outline. So uh, this is a movie from, from 2014... Uh, this is where I leave you about it, it follows Jason Bateman. The opening of this movie is already just the most brutal defeat of a character because he works at this job that like kind of sucks. Like this is not a good radio show. Um, yeah. They make pretty clear of that. Like the host is a dick. Yeah. Uh, and just like, yeah, it, it, not great. And so he, he has a cake for his wife on her birthday uh, his boss blows him off doing, uh, I forget what it was. They had to go over some sort of report. Um, and he, he gets out early, thanks to his assistant, goes home to find his boss fucking his wife. And in in this strange fashion, he sits down with the lit, the cake with the lit candles, and then turns off the radio. After just sitting there and watching them fuck briefly. Um, and that's the opening, what, five minutes of the movie? Is just yeah. this guy's world shattering. And then yeah. uh, we, we cut forward to him on a couch in the shambles of his life. And he gets a call telling him his father dies. A rough start for him. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bummer, man. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest of the movie is about... Him and his siblings coming together to sit Shiva um, to mourn their father and the character flaws and life issues that they are having therein that we will discuss um, as we get into the movie. I will say one of the things I think the movie does really well is the little details of stuff. Like, I think there's some really good 
small touches and stuff. Um, so when he finds out his wife is cheating on him, all the audio being cut out and like you can see people talking to him and it not registering. Um, yeah. I actually I wrote down that during one of the scenes where people are coming in while they're sitting on the the shiva chairs, um, Tina Fey's mug has lipstick on it to, to show that she's actually drinking out of the mug. Um, the re the repeat questions that they're getting from everybody, like everybody's answering the same question over and over again, uh, which I don't know how you guys feel about this, but after moving here and getting this job, coming back for holidays uh, is very that's very indicative of my experience uh, with the family a lot of the time. It's, that is it, how that it was be, a little you... detail, but that is how it be. <laughs> as you get older, that's that is indeed how it be. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think uh, like little stuff like that is good in the movie. I think a lot of the, the little details, the little touches are, are good. Cause like, if you explain this movie from like, like, I guess just the explanation I did, like, it doesn't sound like the best movie ever. Like nobody's going to be clamoring to go watch it. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it comes together well. Yeah. What it, what it tries to do, it does better than I've seen. Mm hmm I mean, it kind of reminds me of, uh, is it Four Weddings and a Funeral? Or, I think that's what it is. Uh, it, it's very similar to that kind yeah, of I haven't, style. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but that is the title of a movie that I think does a similar thing to this, yeah. Um, so what, which sibling would you guys like to start with? Uh, we can go from, like, uh, the least... Not least important, but like least screen on time, time to the most, yeah. I think, probably. So Corey stole as Paul? Yeah, Paul. Uh, I do think he's the weakest of the ensemble cast. Not that Corey Stoll is a bad actor, but he's also playing the straight man in a comedy film. And like, his character isn't given much. Yeah, yeah and it's funny because I've seen him do comedy, you know, before. He's not like not funny. Like it's it's not like he doesn't yeah, have not have yeah. jokes in this movie. He just for the most part is the straight man to yeah, everyone else. He's, yeah, he's not you know. Um, so yeah, so so yeah, Corey Stoll yeah. is playing Paul, who is uh, I believe he's the eldest Altman child. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and correct. and he is the child who stayed. So uh, their father Mort, who's passed, uh, ran a. This is a sports shop, how you describe it, right? I don't know I don't, exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Well, we, we, we you, see you inside see like the we see inside the shop, um, Corey restocking, and he's wearing a sports headband that still has the tag on it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, I, I assume it's sort of some sort of sport equipment store, um, which also is like a weird thing to have in like a tiny town. I guess I guess not that weird, but it seems well, like it'd be I, a very seasonal business. You know, it makes sense uh, later on. You know, when they're talking about, oh, this is, you know, your your dad was terrible with business, and until Paul actually yeah, came on board, so it makes sense that it would be a you know a business you wouldn't typically see in a small town. Yeah. So um. So yeah, Paul is the child who stayed. He they mentioned he lives thirty minutes from the family house. Um. He works at the business that the father owned. He actually came in and, as you said, helped the business when it was failing. Um, and his big problem is that his wife wants a child. <laughs> um, and it and isn't I think going his well. Problem is the, the, I think his problem is it's, his is the easiest solution, right? Like, oh, he doesn't want to get checked for fertility. Like, we'll right. do that. Like, <laughs> what, like, to me, it's just the least, like, like yeah, you if you want to have a kid, you better find out. Like, also, or your he's wife like, wants to have a kid. He's the one who's complaining about the most, like, non. It's just such like a not thing, and like everybody recognizes it in the show, so it's not like it's mm -hmm. you know they act like it's something that it is bigger than it is. But it is weird to just like I don't know. I feel like it is what it is. It's like he he complains that it's on a schedule, but still, it's like it's not that big a deal. Like, come on. And yeah, like I the, think the implication the moment... is there is like that's the only time that they they have sex, and so it's like it's no longer an intimacy thing; it's just a scheduled yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. But like, I kind of get that. And then I would say he also has two other minor um, conflicts in the movie. The first being that 
his brother Judd uh, dated his wife before they got together. Um, and yep. the other being, he wants to be the responsible older brother, but he also wants to be thought of as, like, fun with the family. Um, yeah, and they're like, you're not fun. Yeah, they're like, you were never fun. <laughs> super minor, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's what I'm saying. Those say are very the, small. The major, the major thing would be that, uh, you know, his wife does try to have sex with, uh, with Judd. Yes. Interesting, though, because they don't really make you know, that... They, that. That's never resolved. It's just, yeah. you know. Also, like, he found out, but it wasn't even like like he was right for the wrong reasons, which I think was yeah. more of like a yeah. thing, but like that's yeah. gonna be so hard to explain to be like, oh yeah, we weren't doing anything. He's like, oh okay, I totally believe you, but you should probably know <laughs> earlier. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? I, if yeah. I were Judd, I'd be like, dude, I have to tell you that your wife like yeah. tried to get seen. I I wouldn't so much say like she wanted to fuck me, but I'd be like. She was trying to get semen from me to have a kid. <laughs> you need to find out uh, if you can have a kid. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, it's also weird that he like he blames Judd, and he says, "I saw." He says he saw them kissing when, like, I mean, they were, they were hugging yeah. very close, but like their heads weren't even turned towards each other. Like, there is no way you could possibly misconstrue that they had been kissing. I think that's kind of the point, though. Like when you're yeah. emotional. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, that's that's most of Paul. He really doesn't even have like super um uh, like super close him. interactions with his care with his uh, siblings either. Like the, the other three siblings all have interactions with one another that flesh each yeah, other out. And, and Paul is yeah. again, he's just he's the responsible brother that is being played off of more than anything else. Mm. Um. Definitely true. And that's why he's really the weakest of the uh, the ensemble. And I I think that's all we have to say about Paul, probably. Yeah. And I think yeah. moving into that, you have Tina Fey with Wendy, right? I would say she's second most behind Judd. Really? Yeah. Because I think... I mean, should, is... should we go for... Um, should we actually go for the mother? <clears throat> yeah, we sure. Why not? So, uh, Jane Fonda plays the mother. Hillary Altman, which I don't... Is her name ever said in the movie? I don't remember her name being Hillary. No, they always I don't, just say I mom. I don't think so. Think. They yeah. always say mom or mommy. Um, yeah, maybe by the way, the, uh, saying mommy when they're that old. I, 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 thought that was, I thought that was a good inclusion because they all do it, so it seemed like a family quirk rather than just a thing someone decided to do. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, it just seemed like a thing they're... Kind they're, of fits their character, I guess. Do. In a sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Hillary Altman is a, um, a therapist and a novelist, uh, a, a very successful published novelist for writing about her children <laughs> um, in a book titled Cradle and All, where she basically just exposes her children's secrets yeah. and puts them on blast <laughs> for the duration of a book. Which, which pretty much is just super messed up and she doesn't really get called out for it they're just kind of all like yep well they, they all are like i mean they're they all like unhappy it, when she's writing things and like they confront her about the individual things she wrote and she just sort of deflects um but you can you can see where they started getting issues <laughs> as yeah, children yeah um uh so yeah she's the, she's the one who asked them to sit shiva um saying it was the father's dying wish uh, which it is revealed later in the movie that is not true she wanted her children back together because uh, i guess she knew all of their lives were crumbling and it's it sort of presented in this way because she, she's like um i wanted all my children back under my roof and you all needed each other but like she doesn't know about judd's situation but here's here's the thing I'll say, and and they they say this later on when uh when Tina Fey uh is talking to Jason Bateman or Wendy Altman is talking to Judd, mm. um, and they say, well, how much could you have possibly loved her if you didn't know right. for a year, that you know, which is kind of true. I mean, if you yeah, if you don't notice that something's going on for a year, but that, it still wouldn't the mother still wouldn't know anything about it. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's but at the same there. time, you might know like the relationship is fake. You know, yeah. I think you can kind of tell that when you 
um, at the very least, the, the, the onus for the mother bringing them together is to reveal that she is um, in a relationship with Ori's mother from across the street, Linda, I believe her name. Um, sort of, as Mort was dying, they grew closer and they uh, started a relationship. Uh, and one of the things I like is they, they're like, of course your father knew. Like, we, it wasn't just like, yeah, we went behind his back and waited for him to die. It was like, no, we, we told him. And he knew that she wasn't going to be alone. Yeah. I also, uh, I thought it was a little weird that they just kind of like, she walked across the street and then they started like making out. It was weird the way they made out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess is how I would say it. Yeah. Like, no, 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 like, I specifically making out is like, you know, impassioned kissing as opposed to just like kissing each other a little. But again, and that's like, like kind of in line with Jane Fonda's character in this movie. She's very. I mean, but you could tell the reason why they did it was to like get the attention of like. See, I, I disagree. Fighting. I think it worked for that, but it, it was just in the wake of their fight. And this is presumably their first time seeing each other. I took it as a impassioned like sorry i fucked first up time seeing each other they, they i think she had been introduced earlier just no no no, like... no the first time they've seen each other since they fought because they had oh, that big yeah. fight and linda stormed out so this is their first time seeing each other and they walk across to meet each other and i just took it as an impassioned i'm sorry i fucked up and also because i, I, I a, assume i assume a little much no no because like, i assume yeah, the I reason know. they fought is that she wasn't telling her children so this served as a way to be like i'm sorry i'm an idiot Here's me telling my children. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because it's I not get, revealed like, what they fight about, but like what else? Like there's nothing else that we could possibly assume they were fighting about. Yeah, that had to be what it is. But they were definitely uh they're making out pretty heavy there. I mean, I guess, you know, it makes it it's in line with her character, like telling every little detail. Yes, it's about... very it's very weird, but I think it's in line with her character. Yeah. Um Yeah, that's yeah. true. He's Jane Fonda's character is very sexual forward. <laughs> Telling yeah, people yeah. at the funeral about her dead husband's how, dick. How, how, yeah, how girthy <laughs> it is. And um, the sheer circumference. <laughs> yeah. Although, in hindsight, that seems a little bit weird, knowing that she has a lover now. I mean, maybe, but they were kind of all together, though. That's, suppose, that's what's yeah. revealed, is that, like, yeah, they were doing, like, he had cancer. He knew, like, he wasn't going to be able to. That, that's yeah. actually a pretty common thing, what I understand. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing too is like I think Linda would also understand because she she mentions in the kitchen to Judd like I always find little ways to bring him up in conversation still like it doesn't erase the past that she had with Mort. yeah I think that's more of like and these people are pretty like I wouldn't say like enlightened but they're pretty like okay talking about past relationships when it comes to like dead people I mean I think we can say enlightened doesn't Jane Fonda literally say that Mort was an enlightened man Isn't that I mean, one of the lines from the funeral. Yeah, but more it might be, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, I think that mostly covers Jane Fonda. Her breast implants were a, a big thing in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> brought think it up was a funny, lot. You know, it, it was the payoff was for later when when he hugs her and then goes like, "Thank God you got that second strap." <laughs> <laughs> um, so so you think Wendy should be next? Because I think Philip should be next. I mean, I think Phil has a bigger part as far as like I don't I don't know. I think like, I, I think Philip has a bigger part in everybody else's story, but I think that Wendy has a bigger part in in Judd's story. I don't know. I think she definitely has like a, her her story is stronger alone, but yeah. I think Philip is like in everybody else's business. He kind of like gets everything out there. That's if that pain. makes sense. But Which, I don't know, either or, whichever you'd like to do. All right, um, I guess let's do um, Philip. Also, we we glossed over this when we talked about Paul. Um, Paul's wife is played by Catherine Hahn, who is who's great. Um, mm -hmm. She was in the... In, was she the one that was in the previous movie? What was the last movie we talked yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. This is, we've now chained three movies together. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> yeah so, so Philip Altman, uh, the baby brother of the family. Um, Played by Adam Driver. I think he's supposed to be a pretty decent chunk younger I, um, than them. Because he mentions that Wendy raised him. And I 
uh, my read of it, I don't think they ever specifically say it was, it goes Paul, Wendy, Judd, Philip. Yeah, I mean, or Paul, Judd, Wendy. No, you're right, you're right. I think it goes Paul, Wendy. Yeah. Um, By far. Yeah, and I, I assume there's at least, like, the way they talk about it, there's probably at least, like, a 10-year gap between Philip and whoever the next old... Uh, the next young yeah siblings. that's that's my guess is that phil's like five years younger than judd at least yeah um so so philip played by adam driver is the family fuck up um uh it is it is highlighted in many ways in a lot of dialogue throughout the movie uh the funeral scene where again everyone's being asked the same question his question is oh what are you doing for work now and he answers differently every time because presumably he doesn't have a job right now. Um, and he is dating yeah. his therapist. Which I thought... Um, I don't know. I, I just think his character's funny. Like, as, as much as he might be the family fuck-up, it's just fun to, like, have that character. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's definitely the, the funniest character. But the, the, the thing about him is his own story is quite short, you know? Um... I mean, he's involved in everyone else's business, <laughs> but yeah, him, himself, you know, his, his whole arc is, uh, kind of Judd fucking him over. I think. I think his arc is basically is weird because it, it's less of his arc and it's more of everybody coming to terms. Yeah. I, I feel like the up. main character is almost Phil in a way like Judd is still definitely the main character, but Phil kind of touches everyone else. Yeah, I, he I definitely interacts with him, but I don't think that makes him a character. I don't what, think, yeah, no. What I'm do you just mean, saying it's weird. Over? He's the he's like the antagonist, I would say, in this movie. Um in like a less of like a oh we we have to fight him, but more of like he's antagonizing, like literally antagonizing other people to like reveal information or to do something about where they are. I mean Wendy, Wendy, Wendy does character. that too. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I just think it's uh, you know, he's he's with this um, therapist, mm. and the therapist, uh, Connie Britton. Yep, played by or no, Tracy Sullivan, Tracy played, played by, by Connie, Connie Britton. Britton. Um, I think her, I think she's one of the weaker actors in this. I don't feel like she did a bad job, but like everyone else is just so good. It was like, well, again, she's. Oh she's a straight man in a comedy movie like yeah i don't think she has a joke in the movie really no hmm. i don't think at all her her but, job uh, is just to be um an offset to philip you know obviously he he goes and he he leaves and then or during the funeral and then judd you know decides to check on him or with weed of course but yeah i mean it was just i don't know it, it's kind of a weird like his character is hard to talk about because he's just kind of everywhere. Like there's... I also think his character is hard to talk about because he doesn't really have an arc. Like he starts no, he off. He his starts arc off is, as, like... in my opinion, he just gets fucked over. Yeah, I want to dive in. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean by Judd fucks him over? Okay, so Adam Driver, mm -hmm. uh, Bill, he leaves. You know him at the ice rink he kind of like helps him i think he does it on purpose brings him to penny right to be like hey, okay that's again that's him, also, him interfering in his life but yeah also on. he he did yes, that very but, selfishly like he hold on but there's jason bateman the only evidence that he has like oh yeah phil definitely fucked her around behind your back was that he had his shirt inside out well, he doesn't he say that back. he definitely did, though. He says the odds are pretty good. I don't know. I... And she was already deciding to leave up to that if, point. So listen, if you think Trevor, you have no proof, but you're like, Trevor has cheated before, right? Would you be like, if, if Trevor's fiance mm -hmm. was like, do you think he's cheated on me? And you were like, dude, probably, I don't know. Like, would, would, is that what you would say? Like, because that's basically what. Uh, if I had just gotten in the car Tracy asked with my brother, and his shirt was the right way around, and then when he picked me up, his shirt was inside out, 
That's that's really loose though. That still doesn't. That's not like a good okay. like. Yes, really? Let me, okay. Box. What scenarios in your life do you take off the same shirt and put it back on? You go eat. Uh, you get some ketchup on your shit, and then you're like, ah, I'll fucking flip this inside out. That's a uh, thing you do as a person. On. Here's another one. Um, you take a bath, and then you put the shirt back on. Why would you Another put the one. dirty shirt back on after you cleaned yourself? I've done it before. And it, it wouldn't be like a dirty shirt. It's like a shirt I wore for like three hours. And then I decided... But where like, would he have been showering? Yeah, he didn't go home. His house is... Didn't they say his house is pretty close by? No, that was Paul. Philip doesn't but live he's, anywhere near Philip lives in California. Maybe he, maybe he could have got a tan. Either way, it's just... I don't know. It seems I... like... I don't think he got fucked over. I think that yeah, maybe it wasn't like it, it wasn't right. That's all I'll say. I don't. I, I wouldn't I think, say that it wasn't right. I, I, I think that it was really justified. But like, sure. Like I see where you're coming from. It. I, guess. I wouldn't say like, oh yeah, the chance is high. I would just be like, I would tell maybe tell her like, I mean, this happened. I don't know if it means anything. But as far as you know, Jason Bateman's character knows like the only thing he knows is that like oh he was flirting with this uh ex that he used to have at one of the days i I, like i I don't know i guess to me the whole point of philip's character is that he is the way he is and you know people let him get away with his thing and he always has and so he always will and that's just kind of his character but we have to here's the thing talking about uh adam driver's character at the end judd does not let him get his way he takes that porsche right that's his like character uh that that's like kind of the development i guess is like they're not letting him get away with his shit like they're not covering for him who probably because of the way he has been in his past and you know there's some evidence it's like he's not going to cover he's not going to say he did it but he's not going to cover for him so I think Adam Driver's arc or Philip's arc is that he didn't change, but now is being held accountable. Yeah, the end of his arc, yeah. the best you could say is that he's getting ready to try at the end. Because also, yeah. I disagree. They do kind of let him get his way because he gets a job at the store, which is what he wanted. Yeah, yeah. and but... plus it's 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 Judd who takes the Porsche at the end. Um, you know he will give it back. Well, yeah. Like he's not just gonna steal it and then like wait right. until you know Philip, Phil like says, you know like files a police report or something. Yeah, but, it's all about uh, just learning his lesson. I think. I think. I think at the end when Judd is looking at the car, he's just like, you know what? Someone's gonna take it. Why not me? Yeah. Like fuck it. Like if it's me, he might actually learn something. Yeah, the, Philip's arc ends with him beginning to become responsible. Yeah. He doesn't I'll, I'll really that, develop yeah. that much. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll I'll go with that. Um. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of this is centered around the the therapist we talked about, who is um older than than Philip and more mature and just yeah. generally but better at life. Let's 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 talk about this for a little bit because I also think the therapist is a little. I wouldn't say like sneaky, but you can clearly see what her motivation is for being with Philip. And that is that uh, the therapist already knew who Phil was when they started dating. I mean, she explicitly and tells like, you her motivation for being with him. She, yeah, I mean, she says it was supposed to be a fling with a younger guy, just a little bit of fun. And then she fell for him. I disagree. You see the way she talks to, uh, to Jane Fonda. To Mrs. Altman, she read. She said it was my dissertation in college. Maybe, but she also no, doesn't she, like. She literally knew that name and went, "Oh shit, this is like one way or another." Even even if like, oh, I just took this therapy with this new guy, and then you looked him up later to find out, like, oh, it's actually Hillary Altman's uh, son. 
Oh, that's so interesting. Well, you, you can't tell me that didn't have. So I think that's you though. creating something that isn't in the movie, though, because she never even has another conversation with Jane Fonda. If anything, she gets closer with the siblings throughout the course of the movie. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm just saying it's a little odd. I don't think it's a thing I invented because it's explicitly in the movie. That was something that I didn't notice that I'm like, huh? Yeah. I, so think, I think I thought that was supposed to be a play more to highlight the Oedipal complex that they mentioned. The what? The Philip's Oedipal complex. Oedipus. I don't know what you mean. The Greek story. There was there was a guy named Oedipus. Uh, well, there was a king and a queen. They have a son. The king gets a prophecy that his son will kill him and take his wife. So he sends his son away. Um, the son never knew where he came from. So when he comes back to the kingdom, not knowing that it's where he's from, he kills the king and takes his wife. So an Oedipal complex is somebody who goes after someone who is like their mother. Um, yeah, 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 okay. Um, I would have just said the, what, what do they call that? Like a Freudian thing. Well, they call but it anyway, an Oedipal complex, which is why Freud I said the Oedipal it complex. Oedipal, does Freud call it an Oedipal? Yes. Okay. It's just confusing the way you said it. I thought you meant like edibles, like marijuana edibles. And I was like, what? I don't think he ever takes it. Well, that's edibles. why I said Oedipus after, and you still seem to have nothing. Uh, <laughs> but like, <laughs> at least I would have like nodded, you know, off camera. Like, ah, okay, I'll look that up later. But, uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the way it was played, because she a, she's a therapist, like, her, and I think that was just to drive home that, like, she's in the same type of study because she wrote her dissertation on her stuff. On uh, Bill. Well, she wrote it on Cradle and All, but <laughs> yeah, I which guess is that's partially Phil. Which is what I'm saying. Honestly, it it's sounded like little... Cradle and All was more about Wendy than anyone else. <laughs> yeah, but it's a little... It's a little, I'll just say it's a little sus. I'll leave it at that. Um, Let's move on. Let's, sure, we're ready sure. to talk about Wendy. Uh, yes, we can talk about Wendy. Uh, so Wendy has two major things in the movie. Um, I guess they sort of coincide with one another. Uh, her husband is a major asshole who they, weird relationship because they don't seem to love or like each other at all at any point during the movie. Yeah. Um, they have a kid together. <clears throat> it's kind of explained why she's with him, though. Like she wants somebody who she doesn't that she that she's not going to love because she doesn't. Yeah, want that's betray. true. Um, yeah, she doesn't want to betray Hori, who is the other major conflict. Uh, they were in a relationship as young teenagers to early adulthood, and then when they were twenty, they got into a car accident. Uh, which gave Hori brain damage. And they separated after that because he was coming to terms with his accident, his anger and stuff, and she left uh, town. <clears throat> but she still is in love with him, and so coming back to town stirs all that up. Um, which is, again, offset by the fact that her husband sucks shit. A lot of unfaithful people in this movie. There yeah. is quite a bit of unfaithful people in this. Yeah. Uh, the only one who isn't would be Paul. Yeah, but it's Paul's and, wife. Yeah, yeah. I would say Oops. Judd. Judd is, Judd, is uh, Judd and Quinn aren't separated when he sleeps with Penny, though. Okay, it doesn't matter. I know, but I, I mean, like, depending on... Because, like, his reaction... Because uh, that's sort of the conflict with him and, and Rose Byrne later is that like he goes off to Quinn because that's not resolved, and he's like, no, it was just a mindless fling because otherwise, what does that say about you? So, like, there's clearly something there that she considers it to be. Well, unfaithful. I think she's. I think if he was a little more upfront about what was going on, he knew. Oh, oh, and I think too. I uh, first of all, if if Quinn, she was the first person listen, he told. This is all I know. If Quinn um, said some shit to me after, you know, like finding out she's pregnant, finding out blah, 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 she went, oh, and Wade is sterile. I'd be like, really? Show me proof. Like, he kind of did. He said, strangely, I don't 
trust isn't the first yeah. uh no, no no i know but like i would still be like i don't care <laughs> like i'm having a dna test the minute this child is born either way because this is fucked up like absolutely i would not be like oh yeah yeah i'll just raise the kid and pay for it uh yeah. but i think like part of his story is that it didn't matter in his like in some sort of way i mean because, like i think it's it very similar yeah i think it mattered a lot but also i think um, he just I, believed her that it was his kid that, that's kind of what i'm getting at is like I mean, he's taking the step to be a dad, and he wants to reconcile with her. Like that's saying a lot. Like, I don't I know. I I, I think I it's strange. In... I think it's strange because, like, if I was in that situation, whether or not I wanted to be the dad, like, I would be the same. Like, if know. they if they wanted me to be you, the dad, you would do exactly what Judd did. Would I condemn the child to that asshole as a father? I would hope I wouldn't. Wait, wait, wait. If if the father is actually the child's father. Like, yeah, if the asshole was the, the kid's dad, I would hope that I wouldn't just be like, oh, thank God, well, I, they're going to fuck up that kid. Wait, but it's, like, hold I, on, but you wouldn't be in a relationship with her anymore, and it's not your kid, so yeah, what, is, what is your it, avenue yeah, for well, being what's the father? Your, because, yeah, okay, but she you have one, no but legal right this, to that child. For fuck's sake, God, she was asking him to basically father the kid. No, she like, wasn't. Was... Could have fooled me. Never mind. She, she only was because Wade was sterile, and it was his kid. But you're saying that you didn't even believe that, so I'm confused. I wouldn't believe that. And yeah, I also, not. I, I, I might it. call. I might call nine one one, and I'd be like, "Yep, there's pregnant woman here. She needs to be looked after." I would do that, but I would not go to like, "Oh, let's find out." Like, I would be like, "You find out." Like, I'm I'm a little more hateful than like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, I'll just you know go hang out down here." I don't know. I, I don't think the but infidelity think that... erases the relationship they had. And also the fact that they had been through it before, I think, makes it more think, realistic that he would go. I think if you if you have infidelity that's like a one-off, then yeah, it doesn't erase everything. But if you have infidelity that's like a long-term uh, thing behind your back, it's there's no like, nah, we're we're done here. But that's my personal thing. I don't know. I, I, I think, personally, I, I bought the Wade is sterile, it's your kid thing, because it's clearly what the movie is, is setting yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, like it, it, it sets up the rest of the movie, and it creates, and this is actually one of the reasons why I can't give it as high a score as I originally wanted to, is because I thought it was kind of contrite, the, uh, uh, what, what's her name, the other girl who Judd has seen? Uh, Penny. Penny Moore, yeah. Um... It was kind of like a setup to make Penny like, well, then fine. This isn't a serious relationship, blah, blah, blah. That was like the setup to make like the traditional uh, romantic comedy misunderstanding. Uh, what do you call it? Thing, I guess, uh, that happens. The third act turn. I don't think there was yeah, a misunderstanding there, though. I mean, if he would have just been outright and upfront with like, yeah, and I found out she... He did. Uh, like, I, I, no, no, he did not. He did not say anything until, uh, she was the first person that he told. Yeah. No, no, not. Yes. Yeah. No, it was Adam yes. Driver. No, no, oh, no, no. He told yes. Benny before that. No. No, he told Tina Fey. He didn't tell. Wait, wait, hold on. Which thing are you guys talking about? I'm talking about being pregnant. Okay. So, yes, Philip is the first to find okay. that out. Phil, that was because then Tina. Got right when it happened. No, but then he doesn't tell Penny, which is just, you know, that was going to create drama. And that's what the movie had to have in order for Penny to be mad. But if he was just outright like my wife, whom I'm, who I still plan on divorcing, is pregnant. Like, she just found it out. Like, if he would have said that, maybe Penny and them wouldn't have fucked like that very day. But it would have made the movie significantly less interesting. I don't think it's as bad as the usual misunderstanding in things. I That's think I think she was justified in her being upset. And I, I think... totally do too. But I think the fact that the misunderstanding was something that was like, yeah, you should probably tell the next romantic person you're involved. It, it just seemed like one of those like, oh, I didn't get around to telling you yet. 
kind of misunderstandings, which is very common in uh in like romantic. It's a it's a trope. It's a romantic comedy trope. And then they like, oh, you you know, it was a misunderstanding. By the end, they kind of patch things up. Yeah, that was a lot of um, that was a lot of Judd Quinn Penny for us talking about Wendy and Hori. Yeah, but I mean. <laughs> It all it all comes back, but uh, yeah, I think Wendy's the most interesting character in this, as far as uh, like what's going on in her head. Yeah, because she's just she's just I don't know. Yeah, you know the other guy may be an asshole, but he's I don't know. He never come comes across as like he's deserving of like sleeping or of her like sleeping with Hori behind his back and i don't know if it's happening all the time it's probably not you know no i i thought that was probably the first time it happened because i don't yeah. think she's really in town a lot she doesn't live yeah, there i mean yeah I, I can agree with that but um, i think it's 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 strange that she still is like nope all these years later and that's still you know who i really love um i don't know it's it's odd because I think Hori, Hori's character is like interesting in the fact that he kind of, especially at the beginning, he plays off you know Judd's like misery mm. in a in a fun way, like oh, like me, like <laughs> yeah. Also played by Timothy uh, Oliphant, who's great. Yeah, and uh, you know I, I think the when they're sitting there. And they're on the uh, on the roof. I think maybe the reason why Judd decides, like, yeah, I'll go check. Or does that happen after? You didn't I don't know. Sentence, so I don't know things, what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, why Judd like decides to go see Quinn again at the hospital? But I think that might happen after. But Judd is like he's he's more forgiving of Quinn because uh wendy's like kind of confession even though it's more of like a yep you saw what happened like i kind of thought it was weird though that like it seemed like he was not into penny at all until wendy was like yeah you're gonna sleep with penny and then he was like you're right that's totally what i'm gonna do and then he just did it because she told him to i thought that mm -hmm. was a little bit weird i think they were already gonna have like i think there was already a lot of yeah, there was chemistry, but he clearly didn't want it until basically she was like, no, it's, yeah, it's fine if you do that. And he was like, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I, think, weird. I think it's a little weird, but also Judd, like the way they talk about it is like, yeah, Penny is just like your kind of in-between girl. I think that's weird, yeah, that Wendy brought that up and said that. But that's what I'm saying is I totally think that he bought 100% into that. And he was like, all right, cool, that's my plan. That's what I'm going to do. And then, like, the baby complicated it. And then Wade made it weird because, you know, he's an asshole. I, I don't think he so much went like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. But was more like, yeah, that's what I, I would do. Know. I don't think yeah. he ever adopted Tina Fey's plan. Because it's not like he was planning to sleep with her and then go back to Quinn, back Quinn, which is yeah. what Tina Fey says. He, yeah, he I think doesn't he, I, thought that, I thought that that was his plan. No, he no, more or less says, you know, that's what I would have done. No, no. At the end of the movie, he explicitly says he he needs yeah, to get himself together. No, but he's he's willing like, to be more the, complicated, is what he's saying. He's he doesn't like want to live like a no, no. But life. again, so the scene where Roseburn gets mad at him, where Penny gets mad at him, he says it wasn't just a fling. And she's the yeah. one who says, yes, right. it was. <laughs> Otherwise, what does it say about you? So he clearly intended for more. I don't think he intended yeah. for more at the time. I think that... But he explicitly he, says he intended for I, more. I think he intended for more, but he was telling uh, Wendy, like, yeah, that's what I would do. Like, well, if he was I still being, like, not as simple or whatever. For me, I thought it was real weird, because it felt to me like he was just totally buying into it, and he was just like... Hell I mean, I get what you're saying. I just... I don't. I don't think that was his intention because he says and to her it wasn't just a fling. I don't. But I don't trust him. I guess. Like I just don't think that he's a reliable narrator on that part. Also, because people do this in real life, where like you do it and you don't know why, and then you're like, you make up the reason why, and then that becomes the truth. Yeah, but and that's, that's yeah, that's really what I got. That's he's like. Sorry, that's definitely what. That's definitely true. So that's that's, that's my read. Is like he totally like. 
he didn't know why he did it. He was doing it because she told him to. And then he made the decision that, no, 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 I was going to do the other thing. But I think he did it because she told him to. I that think was, he was. I think That's he was already kind of gonna like. I, you say that, pretty... but every single instance up to that point, he has been like really awkward around her and like very dismissive of her like flirtatious attempts. But also, I wouldn't say. I, that I he's don't think dismissive. he's the one who initiated the encounter Excuse with her. Excuse me. Went to her fucking porch step. <laughs> I think yes. he went to the porch step to to talk about you know his issues, and then they just end up fucking. Yeah, I don't think because she says, "Do you want to talk about it?" He says, "Not really." Is that okay? And then she's like, "You're gonna come inside." Yeah, yeah. yeah like, she yeah. says, "Are you gonna come inside?" Okay, but and like, he, he goes, says, he said, yeah, and he says, "Should I?" And she says, "I would." Yeah, that's true. That, that, that to me reads as her initiating. He initiated the very start of it. Uh, agreed I, 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 by going by going to her her house like going on the porch listen step. penny has always loved exactly uh, he knew what was gonna happen i don't he i don't know that going to the porch means he definitely expected okay. sex so there's somebody who's obsessed with oh, yeah i don't think I don't he, he definitely is i don't know yeah he, he's not that type of guy but he like he knew that it could happen he was going to let her offer but he definitely knew that that was a big possibility sure same as same as what he said to adam driver when he's like there's a big possibility i think he had the same mindset when he went over to that porch and he was like there's a big possibility i'm gonna do what wendy said i i don't know it feels like you're coding malicious intent here where there isn't it's well, not malicious i just well i mean the was... sleeping with her and dropping it to go back to quinn i would say is a pretty malicious act i think that he was taking her advice of like like she's like that's what you need to forgive her and he's like maybe that is what i need to forgive her like he's just working his way I through i don't think that hurt. necessarily means like yeah i'm totally gonna fuck her and leave her i think that's more of just like yeah maybe that is what i need but that's what i was saying time, is like that's what i think that he bought into it way too much and it was kind of weird that's like my point this entire time is like, yeah but he's saying me. maybe he's not saying like yeah that is what i need you're right i think he's just kind of like agreeing like i know a lot of people who will just agree yeah, I'm just saying he bought into it real, real hard to the point where it's almost like I thought it was just a little sus, like a little bit like mm. this movie has a lot of like little sus moments where you're like, that's kind of sus. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I they're they're there. not great people. Yeah, no. no, but that I think that's what makes the movie good, yeah. and the fact that like you know you you wouldn't just think like oh yeah Judd kind of just fucked over. In my opinion, Judd totally does fuck over Phil. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that makes the movie better. I think that doesn't make Judd better, but yeah, you know, he could have just said like, go ask him or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or you could have been like, I don't know what you're into. <laughs> One more thing, because it sounds like we're starting to wrap things up is, uh, I don't like one of the messages of the movie of like the family needed each other. Like what um, the mom Hillary Altman says at the end is because like the family was so like toxic. Yeah. Like, I think that's sometimes. just the mom's belief. I don't agree that, that the siblings yeah. actually needed each other. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to throw that out there. Like that was one of the reasons why I wasn't super big into this. Cause I hate like, you know, fam I, family I, I, movies when, like, I think Judd needed Wendy. I don't also, think Judd needed all the rest of the shit. <laughs> yeah. And also, Jonathan, I think that one, this isn't a family movie. Clearly. No, and, like a family uh, movie of like yeah. literally like family a movie values about a family. Like, I mean, yeah. this clearly, this movie is not for that. <laughs> but uh, I, I think I actually agree with the uh, the messages because they don't really, none of them really have any friends other than uh, Rabbi Charles Grodner. Mr. Boner. Rabbi Boner. Rabbi Boner. Um, yeah, I mean, none of them really have any friends, so who are they going to, like, talk to? You never see any of them. Well, we know friends. Judd and Wendy already talk. That doesn't mean that they need family. That just No, no, that's what I'm saying. Need... Again, I said Judd needed Wendy. Yeah. I don't know, though. I don't think Judd would get 
all the information out that like Phil kind of forces out. I'm not saying family's bad. Like in this movie, like of course, like Wendy was one of the only people who like knows him so deeply because they're related. I just don't like big family movies where it's like we all need to stick together because we're family. It's like, I don't think the they fact are, that your like, family means nothing together, to me. Though. Yeah, that's true. They don't stick together at the end. Yeah, they they don't. They just kind of like go their way. They learn their lessons and they go they their way. They don't start a business together, kind of. Well, in a sense Philip goes That's just to the business because it's what yeah. philip needs but judd leaves and wendy leaves well judd yeah. is in the business with them no no judd isn't yeah judd's not Remember, at, at the end when paul and judd are talking phil's uh, gonna buy judd, or phil's gonna buy judd shares uh, judd says uh philip needs a job paul says you need a job Judd says i'll yeah. be fine and then he, he says do you really believe that and this is beginning to oh, okay yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm not big on that. Like, I think it would have been really mindset. bad if they all stayed in town and wanted to be close yeah. and bought four houses, houses in a row on the same yeah. street. Um, you know, well, I still, I just still think it's gen generally not great. I don't know why, but I thought like at the end there they were gonna start like a radio show. Like I thought that was gonna be like the thing, like Judd and uh, that would have been a thinking. nice memorial to their dad yeah as well as like well now you know and maybe now judd's talking about stuff that's not like stupid shit yeah. like man up radio which i thought would have been like a nice touch maybe like judd and wendy radio show or something i don't know yeah didn't happen yeah but i thought that would have been nice yeah because <laughs> they kind of like that's what he's done his whole career mm -hmm. i don't know yeah, I mean, and that's anyway. that's highlighted because like his father and him used to dick around with the radios in the basement. That was that was mm -hmm. his development with the father, which we didn't really touch on in the movie. Um, yeah, the father is really not a part of the movie other yeah. than one scene when he uh, Judd gets electrocuted and he remembers and he opens up as a person. Yeah, he lets himself grieve. Very true. He he sits Shiva, if you will. Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably about yeah. all we have to say. Um, some of the people we didn't mention who like characters: Rabbi Boner is Ben Schwartz, very funny. Um, Wade, his boss, who's sleeping with his wife, is Dak Shepard, who uh, plays an asshole real well. Um, yeah, I mean, I I thought he did an excellent job of just being the exact person, <laughs> like, yeah, who he is in this movie, and then. Uh, Rose Byrne is Penny. Always charming. Always a great addition to a movie. And I think part of the reason Penny works at all for how little she is yeah, uh, present in this movie, movie is because Rose Byrne is, is great. And then you have, uh, you have Deborah Monk. Yes, as Linda. Uh, who? Corey's mother. Is kind of there for a few scenes. Yeah. Um, great cast. A, a, a really phenomenal all... cast in this movie. All the kids and the mom are like top tier. Yes. Yeah. Triple um, S ranks. I will say this movie is uh, this movie's directed by Sean Levy, who like has weird credits, but like I think is actually pretty solid director. Like his filmography is pretty good. Oh, the producer of Stranger Things. Uh, yes, he's producer. Uh, he produced Arrival as well. He, he also directed Knighted, some of Stranger Things Both of episodes. Night at the Museums. Okay. Yeah. Um, all three Night at the oh. Museums, actually. Uh, oh, Real Steel, Big Fat Liar. Um, he's got a pretty goofy. good he's A lot of goofy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cheaper by the Dozen. I didn't like that movie. Apparently he's directing that Free Guy movie that I think we'll oh. probably end up talking about at some point. Yeah, I, I think so. Whenever When does it come out? Soon, I think. Maybe that'll be my pick if it comes out. Whenever it comes out, I'll pick it. Uh, <laughs> August 13th. Oh, so it'll be a while. That movie was originally supposed to come out in like 2019, right? <laughs> like, am I crazy? Uh, I'm not sure. I know it got pushed back because of COVID, I think. I think it got pushed back for post-production, and then it got pushed back for COVID. Yeah. I don't think it's to be a good movie, but it might be interesting. Yeah. Um, anyway. So it'll be a fun movie to watch. 
Uh, I think we're probably done with this is where I leave you, unless anybody has anything else they want to mention. That yep. should be it. Okay, scores. Luke, what are you in this movie? I think I give this an 8 out of 10. Okay, Jonathan? Uh, 5. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I'm also giving it an 8. I think this, this movie is just as good as Tenet, according to John. <laughs> I don't think of Tenet as six. He thinks this is worse than Tenet. Oh. oh we, we can't end the episode anymore because now I have to know why you gave it a five. Because you didn't mention anything like specifically egregious that made me think I you mentioned would... oh, the only times I spoke were to mention things that I just didn't much care. I thought the cast was great. I did not like anything that the story was really telling. I didn't much care for any of the characters. It did what it did well, but it's super not my cup of tea. Did you care for the characters in Tenet? Who's your favorite no, but I in enjoyed uh, what was going on in Tenet, and I liked the pretty sights, and I I valued the the, brown the, the, the reverse stuff. stuff and all the technical stuff that was going on a lot. I mean, the technical stuff is the only thing I praised in Tenet. Right. I said I'm it's a technically I, very impressive movie. Yeah, yeah. I just value that more. I think, and this movie was technically sound, but there wasn't anything like super like ground. Yeah, there's nothing earth shattering in this movie. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's just well done. It's just, yeah, it's a really well done movie, but it un unfortunately just isn't my thing, I guess. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, that gives it an aggregate score of seven. There it is. Um, so it is your pick next week, Luke. Do you have anything in mind? I have no idea. I'll have to figure that out. All right. Well, this is we're recording this on Monday rather than our usual Thursday, so you actually you have like a week and a half to decide. I got <laughs> rather so than much usual time. week. Um, but I suppose that's it. Uh, we went for about an hour. We're we're getting good about not murdering these so early anymore. <laughs> yeah, or also just like going on and on for like two and a half hours. I don't think we've ever done that in the movie. Podcast. I think we need like a timer, you know. All, all no. of ours. It has like literally, hour, it has literally like never sick. been a problem, so it's not something we need to introduce. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Um, I'm yeah, thinking that's... the Lord of the Ring trilogy. <laughs> no, this is that is actually I'm... something I wanted to figure out at some point. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't complain. Is, Listen, is I like, probably would. I I, I just like. There are some times when picking a movie means people will have to have seen things prior. Like, if I wanted to talk about Return of the King, I mean, obviously we've all seen Lord of the Rings, so this is maybe not a, a uh, great I've example. I've seen it, but again, it's been a while, and I remember not like. But, like, so, okay, we'll have to talk about that at some point, but Jesus. Um, if you want to pick a movie that's deeper into a series, can we recommend like, hey, can you watch two movies this week so we can talk about? Oh, we're gonna this watch. Thing I actually oh, we want can to certainly talk, talk about it, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll have like a movie watch. Like, we'll put things that we want to recommend and like have like a must watch list for it to be or recommended. I guess we could have an episode like every I don't know eight weeks that like. Maybe it's a TV show. Maybe it's this whole series. And we go in depth, but we have a long time to be able to watch all of it. I mean, I, I think it's also... It, it's a thing people can think about ahead of time. Like, don't recommend it a week out. But, like, if you know it's something you want to do for your next pick, like, you know, give two or three weeks. And... Yeah. Because okay. the first, like, in that example, if, if Return of the King's what I wanted to talk about, like, it, it doesn't matter how fresh in your mind Fellowship and Two Towers is. So you could watch those two whenever and then watch Return of the King right before the episode. So that one's fresh in your mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. But I don't know if I'd watch all three within a week. Sorry. No, that's what I'm saying. Not a week <laughs> out. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's something we'll have to figure out. So no announcement of the pick for next week. What do you... You'll see it when it uploads, I guess. You'll see it when you see it. <laughs> uh, but That's thanks for be. listening. Yeah, I'll see, see you, next you time. boners later. I'm not ending it until you say something, Jonathan. I